Yeah, and me. Next, what I have am. you been playing? Uh, you know what I've been playing. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've done it. I've finally <laughs> done it. Hey. So, <laughs> last how many years? Two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half years. Last week, after we finished the podcast, and I said, right, I'm going to finish Xenoblade Chronicles 2 soon. Um, I started on Monday, and I put in about 40 hours this week to finish it. Um, before I begin, though, I should say that I haven't played an RPG to the to the end, I think, since Pokemon Silver, which is <laughs> a very, very, very long time. You know, I've played all the, the big ones, but I never, ever finish them, and I don't know why that is. I just, I never find the the energy to go all the way to the end. Like, Skyrim is one of my favourite games, but I've never finished it. I love the Final Fantasy PS1 games, but I've never finished any of them. So, to actually get to the end of an RPG <laughs> is quite a big achievement, I think, for me. I think I had the same achievement as well. Yeah, yeah I'm in a similar boat with uh, RPGs. I tend to drop off of them after 40, 50 hours. Yeah, this I think this is probably one of the longest RPGs that's currently available. So I picked the right one, I guess. And two and a half years is sounds about right. I know you finished it fairly quickly, didn't you? How, how long yeah, did it take you? It was, uh, I can't quite remember how long, but it, it was over at least a four-month span. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it did it in one, you know, one span, basically. There wasn't a break in between or anything that they dropped off of it. Mm-hmm. But I should imagine it was at a maximum six months, but at a minimum four. Okay. Well, it, I mean, for me, I got it just after it released. My mum was kind enough to post it to me. She bought it for me for Christmas and posted it to me. Um... And I play, I think I played for about 10 hours and then dropped off. And then about six months later, I just decided to start again because I always do that with RPGs. If I drop off, I start again. So when I started again, I dropped off again uh, shortly after. But I decided not to restart and just keep plowing away. And I think probably, I would say I probably played this game actually over, over a span of about four four to six weeks and every time I got into it I was 100% into it and I put like lots and lots and lots of time into it and then just dropped off again because a new game came out or because I was busy with work or something else so I think if you put all the time I played together it probably would be a lot shorter but yeah this last week has been quite enjoyable um so Xenoblade 2 yeah unbelievable amount of content just you will never want for anything in that game. You're what you've always got a list of things to do as long as you're arm, which obviously is good because if you get tired of doing one thing, you can just do something else. You know, there's there's plenty of options there. I would I think one of the best things about this game is the the fact that the story never feels like it's dragged out. Like if you want, you can just progress the story, progress the story, or you can just take a break and do something else if you if you want to do something else. And I think it's quite impressive that they've managed to, because the story must, I mean, just cutscenes alone must be about 10 hours altogether. I I just looked today and Mm -hmm. there was a a video on YouTube saying all the Mm cutscenes of Xenoblade and it's just over 13 hours. Wow, that's not surprising to be honest. So yeah, there's, it's very, very, very meaty in terms of not only content, like game content, but story content as well. But the good thing about that is um, if you don't want to progress the story, which I didn't for the last week, I I basically was at the final boss when I started playing, but I decided to tie up a few other things and other quests and like upgrade my blades a bit. But it always feels like you're making progress. Like as the blades get stronger, even if you're not doing the story stuff, you can feel in battle that they're getting stronger. And I think, you know, the... The side quests really do add a lot of depth and layer to the story as well. Like the main story, as on its own as a standalone, it is very good. But then you've got all the sort of the long blade quests as well, where you really sort of get to know the blades um, a little bit more intimately. Some of my favourites, I really liked Electra's blade quest. Praxis in Theory was probably the best one, actually. I would say, and I enjoyed Vess's. Um, Blade Quest as well with the dumplings and the ah oh, yeah, yeah I was just the, gonna say the dumpling lady <laughs> and the husband, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean these these were quite a nice distraction from the story because you know you're always moving around in different places. You're going like 
you have to do some special battles um and you're not just you know plowing forward to the end there's lots of like content extra stuff to do and i was actually really impressed with the knock on quest which was very close to the end of the game i think it's quite a long quest i think it's where you have to sort of uncover the the secret of argentum um and the fact that this original sort of uh, i can't remember exactly now but the the knock on uh, from the from the fable from the tale basically changed how he spoke to a, he was like a scholar and all this stuff and a world traveler but he changed how he spoke to appeal to humans more to be like kind of cute and stuff like that so that's why the nopon speak like complete idiots because they just <laughs> follow yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's the thing about this game i think you know there are there's so many different storylines different branches so many characters and i think the characters are one of the strongest parts of this game i think you know everyone who plays a part in this game has some kind of interesting tale i think some of them had a surprising amount of depth obviously pyra and mithra um were two of my favorite characters i think rex is a fantastic character um, i agree I've seen some people say that they don't like the characters, but I really hated Tora. I think Tora was just too annoying for me. But I think that was saved a little bit because Poppy also was quite was quite a deep character for a robot, um, which was quite interesting as well. But I just think, yeah, the, the strength of the cast is, is something that kept me coming back. Um, people say it follows anime kind of tropes, but I don't watch anime, so I can't say whether that's <laughs> true or not. I enjoyed it personally. Um, it, at times it does get a little bit over the top, but I think the strength again... When, sorry. When Zeke is introduced, is that what <laughs> you mean by over the top? I, I, quite, I like Zeke. I he's like funny. Zeke as well. You know, I like he's, he's the comedian, isn't he? Yeah, you know? I like all the characters. I just... By over the top, I mean, I think sometimes it leans a little bit too heavily into this sort of, we've got to save the world Gosh. kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's yeah. that's all well and good, but it's just a little bit too much sometimes. And Tor is completely over the top. I just, I didn't like Tor at all, even right up to the end. Um, but at the same time, it does feel very grounded as well in places and i think that's the strength of the relationship between the characters like i think probably the best character in the game is nia and i think her and rex's sort of storyline and arc is is the best one most interesting obviously pyra and mithra as well with rex but i just i feel like even though it's like a fantastical sort of completely over the top at times story it does feel very grounded and there's lots of emotional moments um, which is nice. Um, and I think as well, it's nice that you can clearly see everybody's motivation in the story. All the characters have a really clear motivation for what they're doing. Um, and the fact that it's consistently easy to follow that and to see why and to understand what's happening throughout such a long game. You know, it's a very, very long game. We said 13 hours of cutscenes, countless hours of text, and it just, it all feels right. It doesn't, there's nothing feels sort of out of place. Even the the bad guys, basically, the enemies, Malos and all those, you can... Yeah. You can um, empathise with their, you know, you can sympathise with what they're doing. Exactly. And their quest as well. Mm -hmm. So, just, yeah, just well written, I would say, overall. And lots of people despise the voice acting i must say that for me this was one of the strongest things in the game not particularly the acting because yes at times the acting is not great but i'm eternally grateful that they decided to go with uh non-american let's say voice acting because i think it added something very very unique to this game that not many others get not on many other um games have and just yeah like i loved hearing all the different accents like the fact that nia was welsh um morag being scottish and just the whole concept of morag is ridiculous because scotland has never been 
like a, <laughs> a power uh, and like you know an what industrial a, super it, habit. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's quite hilarious how it's all been interpreted but um yeah it was nice van damme obviously was australian as well and it's just it was just lovely to hear that mix of like different voices and rex will always hold a very special place in my heart because he has a very very strong bolton accent not not just a northern accent as some people say it is a bolton accent the see i couldn't tell the difference now if you if it was the, the welsh i could have told you which town in wales they come from just like you can do in the north yeah just the way he says four instead of four ah, okay. that's how you can tell um that's one clue anyway and i used to live in bolton i lived in bolton for a year and uh it was just very i want to say comforting hearing that as the main character because I don't think anybody apart from maybe Peter Kay <laughs> has ever given Bolton <laughs> so much uh, presence let's say but um, yeah voice acting at times it was it was poor it was poor at times but I, I wonder as well as if that people I, I thought the voice acting was fine all the way throughout mm. but I wonder if the lip sync was off, you know, and then that kind of with the voice acting on top then and mm. has pushed people to be more negative than I think they should be. But I'm sure it's lip sync to Japanese anyway, so it is, it is. That's that's the problem. So yeah. where sometimes when they're saying something, mm -hmm. the the lips are not matching up, but sometimes the facial expressions aren't quite there either. Yeah, that is true. But I, I enjoyed it anyway. I thought for the for the vast majority of the time, the voice acting was very on point, um, and I thought Rex, Pyra, Mithra, Nia, uh, Van Dam, Dromach, Zeke, all really well acted. I mean, there were side characters and side bits like Malos was good, Jean was good as well, and but there were a few side characters where the acting was pretty bad. But never mind. I think that's probably again one of the strongest areas of the game is the story the characters and the sound because the music in this game the soundtrack is without hyperbole i think it's the best soundtrack in any video game of all time it's just it's jaw-droppingly good um i agree so many so many incredible songs and a variety as well of of styles of music you know you've got piano you've got strings um like you've got the hard sort of guitar tracks as well and even even like the choral tracks when you're in when you're in um what's it called the church place the praetorium so just yeah i downloaded the soundtrack a while ago and i just i'll never get tired of it i think it's really 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 well done um and i kind of regret actually not getting the um collector's edition of this game because that came the soundtrack came with it but never mind i've got it now uh i liked the contrast as well between the day and the night themes so you're like i, I was just about to bring that up yeah if, if you go like uh, more ardane and then the day themes are rocking rocking so and then the piano kind of style music in the night mm -hmm. is just wonderful reworks of each song yeah F few standouts i think for me would be indol would be uh Letheria as well. Moradain, the day the day song is is great. The, the songs in the towns feel like sort of that music at an inn. Do you know what I mean? When you go to an inn, it's just, it just great stuff. Really, really great stuff. One thing that I didn't like though was this. You're done when you're fighting the Moradain soldiers. Um, <laughs> you you you've downloaded um, the update since uh -huh. when I started playing. It was relatively new. Mm -hmm. They had other things to say, which I which I quite like. There was one. Don't forget me. <laughs> Don't forget um, me. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say it more often yeah. uh, before the update, and there was there was another one as well, which I can't uh, quite recollect. They used to say as well. Mm -hmm. um, very funny, but then they changed it. It must have been so many people complaining about it. <laughs> I think. That this, if we talk about sound, this is one of the biggest problems I have with the game, though. Is the battle, like when you're battling, it is just a cacophony of noise. Mm -hmm. You you are just assaulted by everybody shouting at the same time. And the music and the battle noise is hitting. And you just, you can't concentrate on what's happening because there's just too much going on. Um, 
despite that though, the audio cues for doing moves are very useful. You know, like when you hear Tora going breaky breaky or something like that, you know, okay, now I need to you know top he's up. ready. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's a bit of a contrast there because it is useful, but all, at the same time, it just uh, on occasion feels like too much and you just have to turn the sound down because it just gives you a headache after a while. Um, but the, I mean, because there is so much information on the screen, the audio cues in battle are very useful. You know, just you don't have to look to each sort of um, side of the screen to see what's going on because you can just listen for it. But the battle system, yeah, I think it's the best battle system. I haven't played Tawny yet, so that might change. But it's I just was I'm very impressed with how they've done it. Um, that the fact that it just keeps building and building and building with no end in sight. You get to chapter six, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's another thing you need to do in battles. Um, it is very well explained, I think, but it's still at the same time it's quite hard to grasp what you need to do, and I think even though you can stretch out that first half of the game over about 50 or 60 hours, by the time you get to chapter 6, you, you, you sometimes maybe have had forgotten some of the things that you learned earlier. So for example, I was, for a lot of the game, I was building up um, driver arts, yeah, and then I was using chain attacks, and I had completely forgotten about break, topple, launch, smash, so I was basically playing, I would say, probably about 50% of the game without doing that at all. And now, obviously, I've realized how much extra damage you can do if you incorporate that as well and set your... Top of someone, yeah. launch them, and, yeah. and then get a chain attack on the go. Oh, yeah, wow. So, it, I mean, it's a lot. And YouTube, actually, some of the battle ex explanations that I've watched over the past couple of years have helped me sort of keep it fresh in my mind or have introduced me to things I hadn't thought about, you know, setting up your team and stuff like that. And I think that um, that is one of the really cool things about the game is how you... The, the many, many different ways you can set up your team. You know, the, the game kind of rewards experimentation. You know, mixing different elements, mixing different uh, abilities like healer, um, tank, attacker, like mixing all that stuff together. It's it's interesting how you can build different um, sort of teams, basically, from that. You can tinker with lots of different things, the weapon, the items, I think. So... I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it, like the micromanagement, let's say, of the team. But the battle system itself is is just it's something special. I, I can't even imagine how difficult it was to implement and come up with that, basically. But um, it just it feels rewarding when you when you do well in a battle. At the start of the game, I was always getting de like completely destroyed by higher level enemies. But in this past week that I've been playing, I've just been going for I'm currently at 80 level 83 84 for most of my characters but I've been taking on enemies with 90 with 100 and having no problems just because now I know how to do it now I know how to set my team up what I need it, the, the battle system is just yeah you constant I'm 150 hours into the game and I'm still trying to get it perfect so just great stuff. I, um, I I just basically agree with everything you've just said. The battle system is one of the finest, and they always give you enough time. And I suppose it depends how far you stretch the story out and you don't push the story too far. Mm -hmm. but they, I thought when I played it, they always give you enough time to get plenty of practice in, mm -hmm. to master what they've just taught you, and before you move on to the next part. Yeah. Uh, and, and add in the battle systems on top of each other. Mm -hmm. When I was playing through the first Xenoblade Chronicles, and I only got about halfway through, and maybe not even halfway through, mm -hmm. I struggled with the battle system all the time. Right. This, I don't know why, came a lot more naturally, as if it was um, far more refined. And even people went, oh, there's more things in it, there's, there's more things going on. But it, it, maybe because the way it was structured and building up over time, it, it lent itself to being learned and mastered better. Yeah. It's. I mean, it, it will take anybody a long time to learn it. Yeah. But once you get it down, you really and you really do feel like you can master the battle system, and it is a good feeling. Um, I took on last night. I just stuck it on for a bit, and I took on the. Um, there's like a there's a beast on Morardane, in the wastes, with a quite a high level, and 
It was higher that it was a higher level than I am, and I just decided I'll I'll battle that. Sixteen minutes it took me to, to down him. Sixteen minutes. And I like a couple of characters died a couple of times. I revived them and then slowly, you know, built up my chain attack, built up my chain attack, got like four elemental orbs, five, and then chain attack, full break. Dead. Unleash a yeah. two million yeah. damage. <laughs> and it, you know, that, but that's the thing. Sixteen minutes, and you're just constantly working. You're constantly like, oh, I need to go grab that health potion. I'm quite low. And yeah, it's just, I don't think I could ever go back to a to a turn based RPG because it there's yeah. you just you've got so much stuff to think about and so much stuff to do in this. Whereas and it's moving all yeah, the time. It doesn't feel like you're going through the motions like. As I, uh, as you know, I was playing Pokemon. Um, Let's go Pikachu recently, and the battle system for that is it does feel like you're going through the motions because you know it's just you have four attacks and that's it. And you just if you're stronger, it's just hit, hit, dead, hit, hit, dead. And it just you know it's not quite as interesting as Xenoblade. Um, I used Rex for the vast majority of the game as my main character and I did I did I experimented a little bit and I found quite a good system with Zeke um so I was using Zeke a little bit uh I think for about 15 20 hours I used Zeke as my main character and then I tried using Tora as the main character but I've come to understand that I don't like this battle system when you're playing as a tank because the fact that you just, I mean, if you're taking all the aggro, you're getting hit, hit, hit all the time. And a lot of your attacks, some well, not a lot, but sometimes your attacks don't connect or you get toppled or something like that. So I, f- I found it a little bit more frustrating playing as Tora as the main character. So I just basically stuck with Rex for the majority of the game. And then yeah. a little bit, but I'm, I didn't like being a healer. So I didn't like having Dromak as my main I, I preferred to use Nia with Rex as a as a as a blade. As a blade, yeah. yeah. Spoilers, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, playing as a tank is a little bit more difficult. I always set Rex up as an attacker, and then I had uh, Tora as a tank, and then Nia as a healer. So basically, I used for the majority of the game, I used the standard setup, but I did experiment a little bit, and mm, Poppy was a little bit overpowered, I would say. Yeah, I had a similar experience. <laughs> but that's yeah, not a bad very thing. Very similar experience. That's not a bad thing. Because if you can get all the attention on, on Tora, then it, it it allows you to like just wail on the enemies with Rex, which is obviously a good feeling. Yeah. And then we've got uh, the Blades as well, which really adds something to the battle system. How many is there? I think there's about 40, isn't there? Altogether. Oh, I thought there was more, but I, I don't know. I, I was f- very, very far from collecting anywhere near all the blades, that's for sure. Okay, well, I I need... But you mean the kind of unique ones, yeah? The, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the unique yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need. I think I need 40. Uh, sorry, I think I need about four or five from the main game, and then wow. and then a few more from the DLC. But um, it's, it, it's kind of like Pokemon in a way, I think. Because you, you've got three blades and you have to set your team up. Like, you have to think about which elements you're using as well so you can get a good combo. Yeah. And I just, I think the way all of this sort of stuff is implemented, the blades are implemented into your team, is one of the best parts of the battle system because it just, it does allow you to basically experiment as much as you want and just play around with different teams and different combos and stuff like that. And... At the end of the game, in chapter 10, there is a, a moment when you can only play as Rex and you don't have Pyra and you don't have Mithra. So you've got your collection of blades, but you don't have another teammate to help you set up combos and stuff like that. Or to act as a tank to take attention off you. So you have to set up a three-blade team and then you have to do a couple of pretty tough battles, I would say in an environment that you're not used to because you're only playing as Rex, you don't have anybody else. And I thought this was really sort of a testament to how strong the battle system is in the game because you've spent all this time, you know, powering through enemies with a three-person team and nine blades and now you're alone without your strongest blade and you have to 
defeat four enemies in a row in this sort of new way. And I think, yeah, it's a testament to how strong the battle system is that if you understand it, you can approach that in the right way, if you know what I mean. It, it is logical thinking, isn't it? Yeah. It is using their elements and, and I suppose it's, it's to, to a certain degree as well, it's using the affinity charts, you know, the kind of mm-hmm. uh, skill trees and all that to yes. make your blades a little bit stronger and mm-hmm. better as well. And yeah, the affinity charts as well. Like, I spent a lot of time trying to fill them out. I'm nowhere near finished, but I do have I do have a, a few blades which are fully developed. And that is is an interesting way of making them stronger. For the majority of the time, it's it's a good way to do it. But at the same time, when it's like kill five of this enemy hmm. in Temporanchi, you just oh for God's sake. Now I have to go there, find these enemies. And it, it just, it's a bit tiresome doing it that way. For... And what makes it more tiresome is that if you haven't unlocked that level, mm-hmm. you can kill 50 of those enemies, and then nothing, you unlock yeah. the level, and nothing, it only counts after, and it doesn't tell you that in game. Well, at least I can't remember it telling me in game anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, that, that was a little bit annoying. It does tell you what you need to do to unlock the level. Yes. But, but when it's like, get, get trust get trust to nine and a half thousand and you're only at six thousand and that's not happening for another ten hours basically so yeah that that was that was enjoyable the the like building up the blades and making them stronger for the most part was enjoyable um and obviously the the blade quests helped with that as well uh sending them on merc missions another aspect of this game that i really enjoyed I thought it was really cool that if if you had a, had a blade that you weren't really using but you wanted to make stronger, you could just send them as the leader on a on a on a quest. Like using skills as well to make time go faster was 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 a well integrated. I think uh, the bonuses. I thought the whole way that, that, that everything sort of integrated together. So if you talk about the mercenary missions, the towns, the quests, and the items, and how as you complete mercenary missions you open up new contracts then you can buy new items in shops which are more powerful and then as you buy everything in a shop you can buy the shop and get some kind of bonus so it could be like increased movement speed or it could be sort of uh, more gold from battles like the way all of this came together and was integrated was very impressive and it and it really pushed me to to keep like upgrading my towns to keep doing merc missions and stuff like that and i think the fact that it was so well implemented into such a long game as well it was because the pacing of the game never feels rushed and it never feels too slow as i mentioned before there's always something to do but all these little steps whether you're doing quests whether you're buying items you know whether you're sending uh, blades off on mercenary missions it all comes together quite slowly but not too slowly and that just that feeling of getting more and more and more powerful getting better weapons and getting better upgrades and getting stronger it just it comes together so well and the game never ever for me at least felt too easy or too difficult and I think over a game that's that long I think that's one of the biggest compliments I can give it because that's always a problem with RPGs for me at least that there's you get to a bit that's too hard and you have to go back and level up and then the desire sort of slowly disintegrates and you don't want to do it and then you try again and you fail again and then you just put the game on the shelf and then never go back to it or if it's too easy it just feels like you're going through the motions like I said about Pokemon but this never feels like that and that's that is just incredible I think over 150 hours to never once feel that it's too easy or too difficult. I think it's a it's a big testament to the developers that they've managed to achieve that. Um, but not everything is perfect about this game. <laughs> I've been very positive about it so far, but there are a few problems. Items. I can't wait to hear these. <laughs> Items, okay, go on. <laughs> is the first thing. They are a pain in the ass Because, as I mentioned before, yeah, you want to upgrade you can do it you feel like you're doing it and then it'll ask you to find an item 
and you have no idea where it is. And you need this item, and you need this item for 5 hours, for 10 hours, for 20 hours, and you still can't find it. So for example, I, can't, I don't know if you remember on Torigoth, you can grow one of the, uh, one of the, what's that? I can't remember the name of it now, basically. In the farm in Torigoth, do you know what, do you know what I mean? Yes. I can't remember the name of the crops there. Yeah, you have to level up that creature. Yes, in the farm, yeah, you yeah? have to feed it a specific mm-hmm. exactly. um, produce. I can't remember what that is, yeah. So that, that just, I mean, I finished that after I finished the game because I just couldn't find the items that I needed for the most part. And you can unlock, from the informer, you can unlock information on some of the items, but not all yeah. of them. And for the last for the last stage, when he goes from level eighty to level a hundred, he needs five specific very rare items, and I could only find one of them. And it was go to that place, farm the item, leave, then go back so it respawns. And just that whole process was was irritating, to be honest. Um, and that's one of the central flaws of the game: constantly going back and forth, being stuck in menus. Blade quests and mercenary quests, while they are interesting, and other regular quests as well, a lot of the time I feel like the game doesn't give you enough information about what you need to do. And I used a walkthrough quite a lot actually over the last week when I was trying to finish off some quests just because the game doesn't give you any information. It's like, go to... Uh, go to Temperancha and find this. Well, okay, Temperancha is absolutely massive. Yeah. So what am I supposed to do? I'm not going to spend like five hours running around the whole level looking for one item. So I did use a walkthrough to try and give me to give me a hint. And if the hint wasn't clear, then I just read it. Like what? Look at yeah. a wiki and, and this point on yeah. the map. Head here, pick it up here. Yeah. So that unfortunately was a little bit frustrating. And field skills are very 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 frustrating so for example if you need to do um if you need to do an air jump for example to get from one place to the next then you click on the thing and it says oh your your wind what's the word mastery wind mastery only yeah. level two you need level six so what does that mean you have to do you have to go into the menu switch out a couple of your blades put in some who've got wind mastery and you're bringing all this back. I forgot about this. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of swapping and changing. Yes. The last, like finishing off these last few bit blade quests over the last week, has required a lot of that. Has like these field skills where you have to use like different mastery and like, you know, forestry, but botany and stuff like that. And out of those forty hours, I probably spent about two hours in menus, because you're just constantly swapping in and out different things and that is it's just tiresome i think they could have i think they could have just said well okay you have 150 blades in your team do any of them have this skill yes 15 of them have this skill okay unlocked like why yeah, do you just, need just to just press the press a button to mm-hmm. just load them in automatically yes it's frustrating it's really 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 frustrating so all of this sort of like menu and fiddling about is something was the biggest issue for me i would say um i think if i hadn't been trying to rush to finish lots of quests it probably wouldn't have been as much of as as much of a problem if i'd done the quests sort of more spread out over time then it probably wouldn't have been as big a problem but this last week it's it started to really bug me but overall let, let, let me try and conclude something now then finally it's been i've been talking about this for ages so this is an excellent game it is by far one of the best games on the switch i would say i think monolith have done an astounding job on this game i think you can you can really feel like the passion and the love for this genre um that they've got i think the world's the characters and the music all come together in in a really really special way and the world design is just completely off the scale like i remember when i when i when i went to gormot for the first time and it's kind of that green forest like trees mountains i was i was a little bit like uh 
This is pretty like bog standard RPG. And it, and it's very it's very Xenoblade Chronicles, the first one. Yeah, you know, it's, it's all grassland. It's mm-hmm. all yeah, yeah, savanna. But then when you get out, and like Uriah is just absolutely stunning, like the the design of that world. I know you start off like in the belly of the Titan, and then you go up where there's the huge lake and there's the, the town at the top of the stairs, and it's just like huge vistas. Like the cut, those, the, those trees, like yeah, cherry yeah. blossom trees, the colors are absolutely stunning. And Leftheria as well, Leftheria and Archipelago, you know, where you've got the cloud in the middle and then you've got those islands, just, yeah. just extremely unique, I think. And more Ardane, I wasn't a big fan of that, but I don't really like industrial style settings. And once you go down into the like into the world tree as well, like I'm not a huge fan of that, but. I thought the, the way they used all those different sort of styles that Indol is the best snow level ever in any game with the best snow level music as well. Just fantastic world design. And the and I think they mix classic sort of locations like Gormot and then more sort of sci-fi styles uh, together. I think it all comes together. It feels like a world basically, even though they're taking all these like different influences from different places. Um, so yeah, just all those three things together, the music, the characters, and uh, the locations, the world. Very, very special. But unfortunately, the graphics are not very good, which is a shame. And in some places, it's not too bad. So in, for example, in Uriah and in the Left Ear and Archipelago, it, it looks, I think the art style saves the look of that those those places, but Gorma... Moradain, the game looks very, very rough. And the frame rate is pretty terrible in places when there's a lot happening on the screen. Uh, Textures popping in after you've fast traveled somewhere. You have to wait three or four seconds for it to load. Did you play it in handheld a lot as well? I, it gets a bit worse. I barely played it in handheld, to be honest. I played yeah. it mostly on the TV. But, I mean, for the most part, it looks fine and it runs fine, but it's very, very noticeable when there's a problem unfortunately and i think that is that's the thing really and i i think this is nintendo's fault because i think I mean, obviously as i said monolith have a lot of passion like this game you can feel and you can see the passion in this game and i think nintendo just wanted them to get it out before christmas and i think because of that the hard work was a little bit in vain and i think nintendo did a huge disservice to monolith by forcing them to get this out when it wasn't ready. Because I think if this had had another couple, not a couple, another few months, half a year, let's say, in the oven, then I think it could have gone from a 9 to a 10 quite easily. Because all these problems, although they are quite minor, it's just, it's, it is what separates like the, the great games from the, from the all-time greats. So while I did adore this game, the world, the people, the battle system, the problems that the characters face, the story, it's just, it's not quite that masterpiece. It is like a solid 9 out of 10 and not a 10 out of 10, I would say. I think everybody should play it uh, because I think it's, it's setting a new bar for RPGs, especially in terms of the battle system, but it's not quite a game that I would that I would say is perfect. You'll have to wait for the uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Definitive Edition on the Switch Pro. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. I am going to finish off the Blade Quests eventually. I'm going to have a break now from RPGs. <laughs> finish off, <laughs> finish off the Blade Quests. Um, I'll do Torna as well, obviously. I would like to play through that because I think the the, the story, Torna being set 500 years ago, is very interesting. Um. And then I've got New Game Plus, if I ever do want to replay it. But uh, yeah, fantastic game. I think it's underappreciated, if you look at the sales. Uh, But I would say it's a must-have, despite its minor issues. And I'm very, very, very much looking forward to Xenoblade Chronicles, the remastered one now. Great stuff, Nick. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a like if you've enjoyed our content. You can also check out our other great content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and the Any Cafe podcast from all good podcast providers. Just follow the links in the description below.